Okay, welcome to our F1 2023 driver rankings by me, AJ Galan Banana. We're going to go over all the drivers in the driver standings and we're going to rank them a number out of 10. And then we're going to get the average out of those rankings. And yeah, uh, hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun as well. So yeah, welcome guys. Yeah, hello. Hello, Logan's channel. All right. Okay. Um, how are your days going? Yeah, yeah, all right. Not bad. It's like Christmas season, so it's pretty the crimbo nice limbo. Party. Yeah, the crimbo limbo. I uh, um, <laughs> I think I recorded my uh, my music as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay, it's just gonna be the start anyway. Um, uh, <laughs> it should okay. be better now. Um, bit of uh, improvisation. Okay. Um. Glad you're doing well. I'm having a pretty decent day as well. Yep. We had Christmas just for three or four days ago, depends on your on your country. So yeah. Good good mood. Let's get into this before we forget about the season. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, um I gave you an option to either rank only Ricardo or or all of the Alphatari drivers. So um would you like to rate all of them or just Ricardo? I'll have to mm. rate all of them. Yeah, I can, I'm down to rate all of them too. All right, um, just gonna get my rankings in front of me so I can start. Just my phone doesn't want to, <laughs> so I'm gonna start. Are we going for bottom to top? Yeah, we're gonna bottom to top. Basically, ending with Max, and I assume Max is gonna get. Well, <laughs> a high number from all of us. Mm, pretty high. Yeah, alright. Um, starting off with Debris, I gave him a 3 out of 10 for me. It's also my lowest number I gave every, anyone. Oh damn, that's your lowest number? <laughs> yeah, that's my lowest number. Mm. I, I was pretty generous okay. overall. Um, when it comes to Debris... Because the spirit is with you. Yeah, when it comes to Debris, he didn't really show anything uh, in this... this First couple of races and just got dropped. We don't really know if he would develop throughout the season, so unfortunately, didn't see much of him after those first eleven races. But to be fair, in those first eleven, we expected much more, at least matching Sunoda, which wasn't the case by any stretch. So, yeah, three out of ten for me. I'll be it's easy. Yeah. And then, you know. mm. yeah, I, I'm. Oof. Uh, I, I would I would have to give him like a one. Like you got dropped, you got no yeah. points. Like yeah, your team was pretty bad at the start of the season, but still, like he didn't really show any anything for me to make me feel like yeah he had any true. chance in the sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 the sheet. Okay. I would have to agree with Ajax here. Seemed like he wasn't competing with anyone at all. Got dropped, no points, so I'm also going to give him a one. I think that will be my lowest as well. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, can't possibly go lower than one unless you go with zero, which, I mean, zero would be for a driver that would be like not qualified for anything. Look, I'd give Latifi a zero for all his seasons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Solid zero point nine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay, that's Breeze done. Um, okay, this number should be much, much better. Okay, I'll do uh, just one, uh, one, two. Oh, never mind. Um, okay, Sardin, Logan Sardin, um, for a driver to have a full season on this list, 21st in the Drivers' Championship out of 20 drivers. <laughs> yeah, Insane. very, oh. very, very, very unimpressive or uh, I'd say um, just I was very much expecting m much more from Sargent especially uh, considering he has a good teammate but doesn't have any like world champion teammate or world round champion capable teammate yet so yeah I expected more from Sargent in his rookie season and it wasn't just like he got beaten he got absolutely demolished like whitewashed yeah. in qualifying mm -hmm. And in the races, I think he beat Alban in like two races, 
which were album crashing in Australia, and the second one was probably another uh, reliability issue as well. So very very bad. Yeah. I was considering giving him a 4, but I opted with 4.5, just because this is a rookie season and we don't know just how good Alban is right now. So yeah, my actually my second lowest rating, so yeah. Okay, you you are really you've been you've been a nice kind person. This if you, that's your second lowest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if like. I mean, if if there was a driver who wouldn't qualify for for the race, and then if was given the chance to race and crash on lap one every single race in the season, that would be a zero for me. And Sergeant, I mean, he got a point at more than I expected uh, in the middle of the season. So, yeah, yeah, I think uh, for me, like, I'm not, I'm not impressed by him. I do think he's been rushed into F1 because. Williams got bought out by Americans and they went up like, mm, we need an American driver. Uh, mm. So I do think like he has just been incredibly like rushed into the sport. But there were some races that I was genuine. I thought, I thought he was good at Vegas. You know, he got his point. I thought he was good at all uh, at the other, at Texas as well. Um, I almost said the other American track, but there's three now, so I can't even say that. Um, <laughs> so I really don't. I, I I've been not impressed by him. He's still going to get only a three, uh, but like I don't think. For, for, I thought he was going to be a lot worse. I don't think. I think he is an upgrade on Latifi. As much as that's cruel to say, but like in one season, I think he's already shown more promise than the TV show ever, so I also think he was better than Mazepin. And they both get zeros for me. So I will go for a free. I put 33 by accident. <laughs> just That's thinking about my score. I'm thinking Max just stopping too much. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. okay. So for me, it is his rookie season, so I wasn't expecting much. But he did kind of like underperform even for my standards even though he's a rookie i was thinking he'd get at least like 10 points he got one at his home race which was like that was great but just because he did so badly compared to alvin i am going to give him a 3.5 all right so i was the meanest i, I thought <laughs> i was being quite nice when i was going to give him the three <laughs> yeah i i think i i gave them a bigger number than i should have but I don't think he'll be second on my list. I think there's a few other drivers I'm going to put lower. Um, yeah, I Sergeant is my second lowest, but there are two drivers that are very close to <laughs> to, to Sergeant in my ranking. So, okay. That's fair. Next up, Liam Lawson, uh, the sub for Ricardo, and then um, in the late part of the season, obviously Ricardo broke his hand, so Lawson stepped in for four or five races, and from my perspective. He didn't get any practice in the in the car. Just jumped in and was mashing Sinuda straight away. I I was very impressed with Lawson and honestly expected him to keep the seat over Ricardo a bit. But yeah, um, kind of sad he didn't get to he did a chance to drive in uh, 24, mm. 2024 season. But I mean, if he has the confirmed seat uh, according to Helmut Marko or whoever for twenty twenty five, so. That should be fine. Uh, from those first uh, few races he did in the Alpha Tari, I was I was very impressed. Again, mashing Sunoda, sometimes even beating him, very very good. Um, although we don't really know yet just how much Sunoda has improved over his stint with Gasly, because I would also say he was quite lucky with some of the stuff that happened to Sunoda. He that was the period that the Red Bulls kept blocking Sunoda in every uh, qualifying. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's not that it was unlucky in that period, but whenever they better, they were both like able to drive uh, without any uh, limitations. They're pretty much next to each other, like yeah. in uh, like in Suzuka, for example. All right. Um, my ranking is eight point five, which is my most frequent rating rating um, out of any so far. Um. Yeah, that's just just my opinion. 
That's fair. I quite like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm maybe again being harsher. Um, I, yeah, I was impressed. I think he should have been given a seat. Uh, uh, I don't, I, you know, I think he was. He had a very good season. Uh, very impressive young driver. Really think that he did really well uh, being chucked in there. Uh, and I'm surprised he wasn't given the seat at the start of the season over uh, De Vries anyway. So um, I'm going to give him a seven. I know it's a bit lower, but I just feel like there there is stuff like he did like set the world alight, but he did very well. Yeah. So for me, he was like really impressive. He was an Alpha Tori. He was like he was doing better than Sonoda. Very little experience. He's really young, and yeah, same, I agree with, he should have gotten the seat over De Vries, he should have gotten the seat over Ricardo too, but mm. he didn't, yeah. I'm hoping eventually he'll get a chance, but I'm going to give him an 8. Alright, so we're pretty much close to each other, you know, as well. Mm. I think Danny's got very lucky with the fact he actually got the injury, because I don't think he was quick enough, and Red Bull might be like... Yeah, okay, this experiment's done Done now. We we don't want to replace him with Paris. Yeah. And I think that at that point they would have brought on Lawson, but I think because of the injury, they're like, uh, do we want to yet? But maybe that's me yeah. me just saying that. But yeah, I, I, I do think uh, he was more impressive than Dan, Daniel, which I hate to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Um. last thing about... Yeah, I, we're going to talk about Ricardo later on. Now we come to Kevin Magnussen in P19 for Haas, which, okay, this might cause some controversy, as I rated, I rate Magnussen a bit higher than most drivers, uh, most people, it's simply because I just think he's has much better qualities than his car can uh, give it a chance to show. Obviously, he's, his last teammates were Hulkenberg and Schumacher, who obviously Schumacher has proven nothing in the in his F1 stint, beat him as a pin, but got this well, not destroy my Magnuson, but are uh, beating convincingly. And now Hulkenberg came in after two years out of the sport and beat Magnuson. I wasn't expecting such a such a difference between them two, but still, I I rated Magnuson a bit higher than, and I think he had a lot of bad luck throughout the season as well. And even though the qualifying gap between between the Haas drivers was significant, I think it was like 14th to 7th for Hulkenberg with like 0.3 or 0.4 uh, average gap, which is significant for two experienced drivers, but still, um, I think Magnussen had a better season than most people think, uh, especially in the races, was able to match Hulkenberg most of the time. I gave him a 6.5, which may be a bit quite a bit higher than most people's and I completely get that I just I just think he had a better season than, than most people think that's just my opinion mm. I mean uh, you go ahead go ahead yeah he didn't have like an awful season and I agree with the bad luck a bit but eh, he's still 19th I mean I get why I gave him a high rating though um, just want to point out he he was put into points like three or four times throughout the season as well, or for, actually it was three because mm-hmm. I got three points. Yeah, three three times in the points in a Haas, which was the slowest car in the race space over the season as well. Uh, still below his teammate. Well, yeah, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is sort of what I'm gonna get at. I I I see your point. And I see your thing, but I just don't think the Haas... Maybe it is on Haas more, more than those two, but I don't think either of them have particularly impressed me. But then yeah, I look at yeah, that's Roman, the thing. at least being able to qualify consistently in the in the top half. And that sort of makes me less on board with Magnussen. So I, I do feel like it would be harsh to give him what I was going to give him, which was also free. And I'm only going to deal with round numbers. So I, I think I have to go with a four, but he's luck he's a lucky duck to get a four. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cause yeah. I, 
I yeah, I just I don't think he's had the best season. I understand that Carl's been bad, but I, I think the whole philo- philosophy for Haas, they should have maybe stuck to the young two drivers because I don't think this season's got any better than the season before. And the only person that really impressed me out of the two was Nico, and that's only qualifying as well. Yeah, it's difficult yeah. to prove your speed when you're in a Haas and your yeah. tires are dead by lap two. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm kind of more agreeing with AJX here. Like, he was in a Haas, and that is really tough for any driver. But Hulkenberg managed to make it work a lot better than him. He had better pace than him almost every race. So, although, like, it's still a Haas, he was the weaker teammate. And I'm going to give him a 5. Yeah, this is mostly based on uh, what you rate Hulkenberg as a driver, which yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> which also may may inflate the uh, all the ratings because yeah, I rate Hulkenberg a bit higher as well uh, compared to most. Yeah, people. I think I'm, get, I'm actually going to rate Hulkenberg decently, but I don't know. I just feel like maybe I I also I've never really rated Magnussen that highly, so yeah, I just. Uh, I think about the drivers in a different way sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, this is the deal. There's, there's differences in opinions between us all as well, so that's worth noting. Yep. Yeah. Alright. 5.24 minus an average. Guan Yu Zhou or Zhou or. Uh, okay, I'll just call him uh, Joe, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very difficult to pronounce his name. And um, this was. I think this was a worse season than his than his first one than his rookie season last year because I I felt like he was so, somehow closer last year than this year, and even though he's against Valtteri Bottas, who obviously is a proven driver, race winner, and was on his weekend uh, on his day could beat Lewis Hamilton in the same car, so obviously uh, Joe has a really tough teammate there, but yeah. still didn't show any promise apart from those rare occurrences like Hungary where it qualified in P5 and threw that immediately in the race. Just very, very underwhelming and I was not happy with Joe's development over the season. Just just very, very unimpressive and considering just what Bottas could, could have done in the car. Even though, yeah. Um, I know it's an Alfa Romeo which not the best car ever. Honestly, probably the ninth best car over the entire season, which is also proven the uh, constructor standings. Yeah, not impressive at all. I gave him a six, just because I rate ball as higher. But I still would like love to see more from Joe, just based on what teammate he's against. I mean, if he deserves to be in F1 for more than two seasons or more than three seasons, because he got another one. I think he should beat Bottas next season or. Otherwise, he's out of sport, in my opinion. Can I just it, five should be the average, right? So you're rating them all above average. Well, yeah, that's because I rate Bottas higher than. Well, okay. you know, I. Okay, okay, yeah. I think about Bottas. Bottas season way higher than most people. So that's just that's a bit of a spoiler, but obviously we're gonna get to that. I think we're gonna go along this list, and I'm gonna say a lot of. Um, the same thing. I think Joe is pretty much the definition of a pay driver this season. He showed a lot of promise before. This season, he's just had nothing. I really can't remember ever seeing him in any race. And that's disappointing. Like I think Magnussen was actually more memorable. Even so, I'm going to give them the same rating, just because it sort of makes sense to. Um, but yeah, I really think this was another disappointing season. For sure, I think it's another like, ugh, what, 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 what was the point of you? That would be my <laughs> like big thing. What did he bring? There was like nothing that, to me, that he stood out in this season for. So, yeah, really disappointed with him. Yeah, I feel like Zoe had a very forgettable season here. He didn't like do anything really, but uh, one thing is. He was only four points behind Botez, and Botez, I would say, is considerably better than him. So maybe it was just the Alfa Romeo being a really bad car. But still, Zoe had a horrible season. 
And I don't know if I want to rate him too low. I'm going to give him a 4.5 because he, he did like almost match up to Botas, which is pretty impressive. So 4.5. Alright, that's 0 0.4 last in uh, Magnuson. So, yeah, that was Joe. We got to Daniel Ricardo, who obviously raced only a couple of races towards the end of the season. Didn't really see much from him apart from this, uh, the Mexico race. And obviously, the entire weekend was very good for Ricardo. But again, Tsunoda had that engine penalty, and we don't know where would Tsunoda would qualify. And in the race, I mean, soon I was was supposed to be behind Ricardo in the end, but through that points uh, points position with the tangle with Piastri, unfortunately. So, yeah, I was not impressed by Ricardo over an entire stint he had at AlphaTauri this season. I think he should have proven much more, especially against Sunoda, who obviously got beaten by Gasly in the previous two seasons. So, yeah, just expecting more from Ricardo. Wasn't the wasn't the worst season ever, uh, but still was I was better than Magnussen probably. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven. I just expect more from him, more from Ricardo, and such a capable driver should be a, doing much better. A seven? What? What? <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this uh, is where the controversy. I'll be goes. honest. I think I'm being too too nice as well. I think you guys may be too nice. I'd honestly drop every single person apart from Lawson a rating if I could now, and probably to race. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give him a four as well. Like the, this was a disappointing season. He did come in and look okay, but I just don't think he looks up to scratch to say Lawson to say. Thing, and his big result was Mexico like that's where all his points have come from um, which was an amazing result and I, I don't want to take away from that definitely a huge result from him but like I, he has to show more next season he has to show more you know what actually for Mexico I'll give him a 5 there you go um, mm. oh, yeah I, I, I've just been disappointed I think Ricardo's performance was also extremely disappointing. Like, he was in an Alpha Tori, which isn't a bad car by any means. He definitely could have scored a lot of points. I feel like Lawson and Sonoda were the only decent drivers that Alpha Tori had. And, like, they had four drivers. Like, that's just pretty insane. So, I'm going to give Ricardo a four. He has a great smile, but he <laughs> did not prove much this season. Okay. Interesting. So a rating a tiny bit higher than Magnuson, which kind of resembles my rating as well. All right. Um. Now we get to the point where I may be a bit biased, but I have a lot of uh factual backing by my, behind my opinion. I think Holkenberg had a very very underrated season overall. Yeah. Like not just in qualifying. I mean, in the races, obviously he didn't have the car to be up there every single time in the points. But still had so many moments where it was like P11, P12. And if if he was in the points, it wasn't just like in the points. In Australia, for example, he almost got a podium if the Alpines didn't crash. Which I yeah. am always, always be gathered about because... I mean, <laughs> the, for it. imagine the scenes if Hulkenberg would get a podium in the Haas three races into the season. Like, that, was, that would be amazing. Unfortunately, the Alpines did crash. And... The whole order got reversed and unfortunately finished he, P7 only. He qualified like P2 or P3 for a race as well, didn't yeah. he? Qualified P2 in Canada, qualified P4 in uh, Austria as well. Like some crazy performances. I think he qualified in like, uh, Q3 like eight times during this uh, entire season. I mean, if we look, look at the standings, it's the, it's the, it's the last in the constructors. Car quite considerably slower than the second slowest car in the race space. Yeah. Just I I I don't I don't remember anything bad from Holkenberg's uh, season. Like it was just those rare moments where it was like P fifteen, no. but Magnussen was P sixteen in that moment. Just couldn't get any much no, so anything else from uh, like to, the car. I I remember any incident he's been involved in. He basically almost escaped. Yep. I'm thinking of like Qatar where. 
he basically got forced to crash by the other two drivers. Yeah. And that was right to escape it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That was again. That was the position he was fighting a Red Bull and an Alpine four points again. Yeah. Another another instance. And it's, also, it, 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 it's not just like the it's bad in race pace. I think it's also just like terrible, terrible, terrible on its tires, and it just yeah. And he, he deserved a lot more from his car this season. And you know what? I'm I'm actually more disappointed that he he's not going to get a better drive. And I don't think he'll get a better drive after Haas either, just because people look at the fact that look at his stats under the Haas, look at his like uh, races, and not not put in in uh, in a higher place. When you look at his qualifying and look at what he's done with what is basically definitely definitely the worst car in a race pace, and uh, ignore everything else. Yep. He sounded out pretty well. Uh, I was also want to point out he was like he was like P two in the half of the Austria sprint, which was it was like very wet towards the end. It dried up, but again he was matching the red the Red Bull of Max Verstappen and even was quicker than Perez in the first few laps when it was like very very damp. It also shows very impressive what weather qualities of Hulkenberg in this season. Obviously, Canada qualifying P two. Unfortunately, got a grid, grid drop, but that was mostly due to the team uh, miscommunication. And again, I, I cannot think of any anything bad from Hulkenberg season apart from being beaten by Magnussen in a few races. But again, I I don't think he should be beating Magnussen twenty three zero like Albon because Magnussen has is a much higher rated driver than Sergeant, for example. So yeah, um, I'm gonna give him a nine. My first nine. And my highest rating so far. I just maybe I'm biased. I just feel like uh, he deserves the rating. No, you know what? You've you've actually talked me into. I was thinking a seven, and I was thinking an eight. But I, I think I'm going to end up agreeing with you. I think it is worth nine. I don't think he's been like arguably the most impressive driver on the grid. Um, you know, I, f- I feel like I'm going to give other people nines uh, later, but like. I think he does deserve a nine as well. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a nine. I, I agree with you. I think he's been huge, uh, underrated. Well, yeah, Hulkenberg has been extremely underrated with the worst car. But I feel like to me, nine is a bit high because like, that's what, like almost double Magnuson score, but he, he wasn't like double his points or he actually tripled his points. <laughs> he actually oh, a triple amount of his I'm points. I'm thinking of okay. I'm thinking of wrong thing. Okay, yeah. I I feel like nine's a bit high, so I'm gonna give him an eight. I agree. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I can see that. It was it was between a nine and an eight for me, but I I'm refusing to use the decimal points. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, um, because we go to Yuki. Um, wait, I wanted to say something. Oh, I forgot. Never mind. Okay, go, going to, uh, going to Snowda now. Yuki, in my opinion, the most impressive Alpha Tri- Alpha Tower driver this season. Because <laughs> I mean, we obviously had four, so there's a lot to choose from. Um, yeah, Snowda. as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In my opinion, he improved over the over his first two seasons. Obviously, we still don't really have a benchmark because Gasly left, and I mean, well, Ricardo obviously he's not really as 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 highly rated as he was before. Lawson obviously a rookie, so is De Vries. We don't have a clear image of just how good Sonoda is right now, but I feel like he's improved a lot over his first two seasons. Still has those few moments where he just crashes out in the points and stuff, things like this, but he definitely became more consistent and that's very important in, uh, in the tight midfield that this is. So yeah, I'm giving an 8.5, just below Hulkenberg, in my opinion. Uh, impressive enough for 8.5, but just not just 
not that good for a nine because we don't really know how how good his teammates are just yet. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's fair. I I was really impressed with him this season. I think he actually came on a lot before. I thought like oh, this guy's not really worth it. I don't know why. He, I thought they should have put him in also uh, or Lawson over him as well again. Um, but I think the only reason that he didn't lose his drive was because of uh, Gasly leaving. Um, but, like, at the same time, like, I think he has been really good this season. I think he does need to maybe look to move teams if they don't move him up. Um, because, like, he's worth more than that. See, I, I, I'm going to give him a 7. It is based... About uh, Bouncers Lawson's, but I am being impressed by both of them, and they both, you know, deserve seats. So you know, it's above average. A yeah. bit above average. So yeah, I think I think that's a good good spot to put him in. Yeah, I think Sonoda was one of like the most impressive drives this season. He didn't have the greatest car. He performed very well. Uh, his second half of the season is what really like impressed me. But I feel like he's not as good as Lawson, so Lawson got an 8, so I'm going to give Sonoda a 7.5. I was, I was originally going 8 for Sonoda, but he, I mean, he gave me the most impressive driver point in the last race, so I was kind of grateful for that. The first, I think it was the first time I put an Alpha Charge driver and actually got a point for the most impressive. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay, moving on to Valtteri Bottas, and um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people think of Bottas season as very underwhelming and very, very invisible. I was actually watching the uh, the Alfa Romeos a bit in the season. Like, I was paying attention to basically every single car and just trying to get an image of who's performing and who's not. I was actually very impressed with Bottas uh, on a very, very my very multiple occasions during the season. Got a lot of points in the Alfa Romeo, which obviously isn't the best car ever. Uh, convincingly beat Joe, who again, isn't the best driver ever, but we you know who Valtteri is. He's the driver that is a very, very good driver, and he's a very good second driver to Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> when, uh, yeah, um, I just rate Bottas highly enough to give him an 8.5 this season as well. I was going with a 9 at first, but I remember those few races where he was just randomly 20th place or things like this, which could have been more on the Alfa Romeo strategy just being trash, but that, that was the case for basically every single midfield team apart from Williams. So, yeah, that's my Baltas. Yeah, I... I notice your rankings are like really high. Like, what happens when you get to first stop and you're gonna like? I mean, I, I don't think you have to guess <laughs> twice what what rating did I give Max? Yeah. Um. I I for Bottas again. I just I can't remember seeing him in any race doing anything that good. So I'm going to be quite strict with him and probably end up putting him. It did beat Joe, so I don't want to put him too low. Like at least uh, it, it is it is Bottas, right? But I do think it's gonna just end up being a five for me and like again, lucky I did rate if I if I rated Sergeant lower then I feel like everyone else would be lower. Um So like I just feel like it's been a season of irrelevance from him and that's disappointing to see. You know, we saw Kimmy basically go down the same line when he went to Alpha, so mm. I, 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 want, I want more from from uh, from Alpha next year. I, I definitely want to see them be racing, basically, because it feels like they haven't raced at all this season. Well, they raised yeah. the pass, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but even, like, I, I'm, I'm, I just can't remember them battling anyone. Yeah, um, uh, how, yeah. yeah, I just don't know what to how to feel about that. I was so disappointed to like think about 
the fact that mm. it, there's not a like single moment where I can go, yeah, that was when they popped off or whatever. Like I can't remember them doing anything of significance all season. Yeah, for me, Botas, he is an incredible driver. We've seen in the past that he can compete for a top spot. Obviously, now that he's in Alfa Romeo, it's extremely tough to do that. But I like he had no standout performances. He didn't like um, prove that he is a top driver, even though he's in one of the worst cars. So. Because of that, I'm going to give him a 5-2 because he was, like, incredibly average this season, and 5 is average. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, as you were saying, just want to point out, I mean, Bottas had some pretty good drives, like in Qatar or, or Bahrain, for example, the first race of the season. He was, like, he was like firing Mercedes for some reason. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, if they were more memorable... Yeah, that's, that's really the good. thing. You don't really think about the races and think about Bottas being P8 or P9. Yeah. Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll get he did. He did gain a lot of points. I do think he's a lot show and I did. Like, he would still remain on five and I'd probably drop a show to a three. Uh, but that's just, just how the rankings ended up being. All right. Mm-hmm. Now we get to Alex and... This is a very, very difficult, probably the most difficult driver to rank, honestly. Yeah. yeah he agree. he got demolished by Max, got out of the seat, retur- returned to Williams, beat Latifi, and now destroyed Sargent. I mean, from stat-wise, stat-wise point, of point of view, he absolutely demolished his last two teammates, but those were Latifi and a rookie, who was obviously a very rushed rookie as well. We don't have any any way to actually rate Albon's season. In my opinion, it was impressive, but again, we don't really know the baseline. We don't have anyone to compare him to. He had a car that we don't know just how quick it was. Maybe if, if Max was in the Williams, he could have finished P10 in the drivers. Who knows? Just We'll never get to know just how strong Albon is, because obviously next season, Sargent staying, which is something that I didn't expect, and I hope for a better driver next to Albon so he can prove his qualities uh, that he currently has. Unfortunately, I only gave him an 8.5 because I cannot rate him higher and he had some oh, moments. <laughs> yeah, he had some moments where, like in Australia, he, he crashed out of the P6 or P7 in the Williams, which, like this, these moments, you need, to, you need to bring the car home for points. I mean, he did got a lot of points in Williams, but again, we don't have any baseline and just how good his teammate is and so on. Just 8.5. Still a pretty good rating considering um, Lebanon hasn't given anyone anything higher than an 8 so far. So I guess yeah, that's it yeah, for me. Yeah, it's a ridiculously high rating. <laughs> um, uh, no, I, 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 I respect what you were going for. Um, I was going to say, like, out of this midfield lot, he has been the most, like, impressive to me like yeah you can't really rate him to anyone else or the williams but you can rate his like racecraft and so on to the rest of the midfield and i do think he stands out in terms of you know i can't think of uh anything Bottas did but i can think of several moments alex albon like sean a few of the overtakes he's made and like some of the quality sessions that he did do i think he's i like i'd probably still put hulkenberg higher than him um, uh, and because we're keeping to round numbers, I do feel weird putting him at the same rating as Sonoda and Lawson. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to work out if I give him an 8 or a uh, 7. Um, I'm going to give him a 7. Just okay. because I think his season before was... The season last year was more impressive. Okay. I still think he had an impressive year. I would also expect you to give him an 8 at least. But I mean, if it's fair, I uh, can't really judge just how good a lot of Sargent is right now. I don't think a lot of people are going to get 8s for me. No, I, uh, I, I'm above 7s. So I think 7 is like, he had a good season, but like, 
you did have an amazing season. Yeah. Mm. Right. I think that's a lot of people. It's going to be like that. Okay. For me, I feel like the Williams was a pretty decent car. Mm. Um, obviously, Albin didn't get to prove that, like, compared to Sargent, because, well, he's a rookie, he got one point. He couldn't prove how dominant of a driver he is. But I feel like if he had a second driver like Botez or Sonoda, he would have been outplaced by them. So I feel like Albin, he had a pretty average season in a pretty average car. So I'm going to give him a 6 because I think he was better than Botez, so I can't give him a 5. So he's just going to sit at a 6. Okay. All right. I think... You... You know what I am? Can I change to an 8 last second? You can, of course. I mean, I would change my whole list, really, but... <laughs> <laughs> For now, I'll if give it an 8. The free should be a 10. Maybe we should change that again. <laughs> <laughs> I missed a 0. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, there you go. I think uh, he probably deserves an 8. I don't think many drivers are going to get an 8, so if, if he's one of the ones that deserve it. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Esteban Ocon. I think this is going to be another another moment where I very different. I have a different, very different rating to most of you because I. Yeah, it's difficult to rank the Alpine drivers this season because they were pretty much in their own fight with each other. Yeah. Just not with any other cars. And but, they came out like almost equally with yeah. each other. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, they're what pretty much. The difference? It's very, very minor. Like, few points, just a few points. Yeah, yeah, it was four yeah. points. It yeah. was, it was very, very strange. But uh, when you consider <laughs> how Ocon performed to Alonso, and now Alonso, now that Alonso has a good car, he's up there fighting. It makes me think like the Alpine drivers may be better than most people think. Again. Yeah. I don't yeah. think people rate them too low, but I, I mean, definitely. As they even did that badly against Verstappen, I just think Verstappen is like incredible, and yep. that that Red Bull wasn't that quick. Yeah, it's also a thing of uh, same with Albon. Uh, how your mentality fares with all the pressure and things. We saw it with Albon and with Perez now uh, against Max. It's really difficult. Is really difficult to perform. So now that Gasly has a pretty decent teammate, both of them impressed me a lot. I was, I was first thought I was going with nine for both, but I feel like Ocon performed better over the entire season. Even though he finished behind the driver standings, he had what was it five more DNFs than a Gasly, which were all caused by um, real reliability and. They still finish like next to each other in points. I think Ocon would have finished much higher in the driver standings if not for those moments like in Singapore where he DNF'd from a P5 or whatever. Just yeah, Gasly beat Ocon pretty convincingly in qualifying a like 14 to 8 or like that, which again the, the average gap was very very small anyway. Very 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 close drivers. Like you can really separate them just. One's a bit better in qualifying, one's a bit better in the race, but I, I think race is the most important, more important factor in this one. So yeah, I, I give Ocon a nine and Cassie an eight point five. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, hi, but um, I am going to uh, be controversial and just give them both the same rating, uh, both from six. Just because, like, I really can't say much about their seasons. Like, there's not much I can say about Alpine overall. And I think, you know, it was... It was... Uh, they, they're good drivers and so on. But, like, not, nothing really stood out. Not, you know, not Ocon didn't win a race this season like he did in 2021. Uh, same Gasly, right? They both won races in 2021. Um, or Gasly might have been the season before. Um, so, overall, like, 
they, no, nothing they did was like shocking but I think that's mainly down to their car I can't like absolutely go oh this is the, 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 this is the reason one's better or I can't really rate them compared to Alex Albon or Hulkenberg because like their car's far better I expect them I expected them to finish where they finished like maybe if they both beat Stroll they'd up it a little bit but they they didn't so yeah this is yeah. this is very difficult because i mean you would give a, the other one if a higher rating if they would be the other one but since they were so close to each other and nowhere to be seen from others perspective yeah exactly it's you, just impossible to rate these it's, two yeah, it's impossible to mm. rate like they may be having like an incredible season or like a very very bad season from both of them but you just don't know because yeah I gave them a six because I still think they were like above average, but like just yeah. I feel like for me, um, Alpine were the cars that were just above the average car. Like they were decent, they weren't insane, but they weren't average. They weren't bad at all. So for me, I feel like Ocon had a a much unluckier season. I feel like he was the better driver than Gasly. So I am going to give Alcon a 6 and Gasly a 5.5. Okay, that's a, yeah. quite a big difference between uh, our ratings. Okay, um, how are you? Are you both on time? Like, do you need to hurry up or it's, we can continue with no, this rate? I'm fine. I'm okay, yeah. All right. Um, okay, moving on to the top ten. Finally, Lance Stroll. Oh my God, I was, I was, I was actually giving him a five in uh, my previous, uh, like my original rankings. But I'm gonna go uh, change it to four, just below Sargon. Obviously, <laughs> you're you're probably giving him a two or one. <laughs> I I hope to get that. But what what the season Stroll had, like. Being so far off Alonso that it's actually like people are thinking that a lot of Stroll was just gonna quit on his on his cell, just not really enjoying the sport anymore. Obviously, he's gonna stay there as long as he wants because his office family owning team literally. So yeah, I mean, the end of the season was a bit better. He was closer to Alonso, but still not not making up for most of the season being just a half a second off in every qualifying and like 10 positions behind in both races and qualifying like every every race pretty much very 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 bad from stroll i expected much more from him especially since he fared pretty pretty well against fatal i think i think about fatal Seb sebastian fatal was much better but i i don't think the the gap was that big i mean Obviously, uh, Seb could have won like two races in 2021, and Stroll was like nowhere near a podium. Yeah, this 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 thing with Stroll, he has just those random moments of brilliance, and then he's like crap for 15 races in a row. Just kind of finding consistency that he, I mean, if he would be up there like P5 behind Alonso every single race this season. A bit much better fairing, but now just how close the fight between the Red Bulls was. Um, Stroll just didn't perform because I mean Alonso was up there, but Stroll wasn't because of, uh, of the average gap between them. And then um, all the other teams like Ferraris, McLarens, Red Ferraris, uh, Mercedes obviously had the two pairings which were close to each other, relatively speaking. Uh, Stroll just wasn't quick enough to, to be up there. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, just very very bad season from Stroll. I, I'm going to quickly correct my uh, past decisions. I've mentioned it before. I feel like I was wrong, uh, so I'm going to go and correct all those so I can give Lance a rating of. No, I don't think he was that good. He was, he was te te like compared to to Alonso, and like it wasn't just that he was like doing badly. It was that he was like in the midfield doing nothing. Like he was alongside the Hasses and the the Alphas. 
in some of the races. Like, yeah, he did well in some races. I think Brazil, like, he, especially at the end of the season, he seemed to buck up his ideas. But, like, he was so ridiculously much slower than Alonso. Like, there was never, ever a challenge to Alonso. And, like, he he is just so lucky that that is his seat because he should not be keeping in this sport after something like that, after a season that was just that poor. Yeah, honestly, I think Stroll, um, if you put him in a Williams, he would have gotten zero points. Like, and I think even uh, if you like put him in like an what, Alpine, just yeah, maybe. If like he, he gets like, so much less points than Ocon and Gasly. He gets so much points, less points than Albon, Bottas, Hulkenberg, Sonoda. Like he's mm-hmm. legitimately, apart from Sargent and. I, I think he only outperformed Sergeant and uh, De Vries this year. Maybe Joe, yeah. but like, like, honestly, I'm gonna give him a lower rating than Sergeant, which is a three point five. I'm gonna give him a three because Sergeant was a rookie and like Stroll was performing like he was a rookie. He looked like he had yeah. no idea what he was doing. Yeah, I agree. That's I totally have to agree. He was, he was, yeah. I, I like. If it wasn't for the fact that one of these drivers had got literally lost their drive, he would be bottom for me. Yeah. All right, that's average rating of three point oh, which is the second lowest right now. Oscar PS three. Okay. My. I mean, <laughs> I can I don't know where to start. Rookie. Coming in to McLaren next to Lando Norris, who is uh, regarded among a lot of people as the future world champion, one of those like Leclerc's, Russells, and obviously, first time he's not a world champion, but we used to be in that category as well. Uh, he came in and <laughs> wow, like he was matching Norris a lot of the time, obviously, was still having a bit of a gap to Norris. Which was, I was, I think, mostly due to experience, because mainly in the race space, Norris was able to uh, maintain his tire life much better than PS3. But in qualifying, there was pretty much, especially in the in the second half of the season, there was pretty much like nothing in between between them. Like sometimes Lana would be a, a bit higher, sometimes Oscar would be a bit higher. Just how impressive this guy was in this rookie season again. Sargent was a rookie. And they destroyed. Piastri came in and could beat Norris like every second weekend almost. Which obviously Norris could have performed better in those weekends, like Qatar, for example, where uh, Norris threw a chance for a win, for example. But still, Piastri was up there and performed, got the sprint win against race winner in the rookie season, even though it's not a Grand Prix. Still winning a race in front of Max Verstappen as well. In his most dominant season, uh, I was very impressive. PS3. I actually wanted to give him a three five. Now I can change it to nine. I was very impressed. I, there are a few moments where PS3 show, show his rookie side, like being a bit slower than Norris on some occasions, or a bit of bit of crashing with signs. But that was mostly a science part. Again, very impressive from PS3, at least from my perspective. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you look down here and you go, oh, I just finished ahead of Stroll, that's bad. But I think how bad that McLaren was at the start of the season, they basically lost the first half of the season. That midpoint of the season, they were the quick, second quickest car. Maybe Piastri lost it a bit to the end of the season. But, I mean, in your rookie season, winning, I know it was a sprint race, but winning something against Max Verstappen, like that, you've got to take note of that. You've got to applaud what he was able to do. And, yeah, I just... I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with him all season. I think he handled himself well. I think he did got a good number of overtakes. You know, there were some things that went against him. I think his Silverstone... There was, there was the whole... I think it was the safety car that basically went against yeah. him. And meant that he, he lost the podium due to that. Yeah, yeah. He lost the podium due to the safety car. That... And, and just handled himself... Perfectly. 
I'm not going to go as much as a as a nine, but I'm still going to give him an eight because he was superb. And yeah, as I say, basically you got to take it from Austria onwards. And even then, he didn't have a good car in Austria. Only Landy, Lando did for McLaren's because the the first of the, the season, their car was perhaps the third or second worst on the grid. Um, so they were they yeah, they just did superbly from there. Fully deserved plaudits for that. Mm. Well, well, for me, I feel like this was like by far the best rookie season since like Hamilton. So mm. he won a race, one of three winners, even though it's four actually. Sprint. Yeah, four um, because signs Perez first up. Oh yeah, I forgot about Perez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get it. it. <laughs> and... Righty, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like he was really impressive considering he's a rookie and he was almost matching Norris for a lot of the season. If only their car was better for the first half, I feel like he could have been like top five with Norris. But he he did have his moments that he wasn't like doing performing as well as he usually does. So I feel like Norris was the better driver even though he didn't get any wins. So I'm also giving Pastor an 8. Alright, that's the second highest rating of 8.3. Now moving on to George Russell. Um, this is probably one of, going to be one of those uh, splitting, uh, opinion splitting points. Because I feel like Russell didn't have as bad of a season. Just considering just wh who his teammate is. It's Lewis freaking Hamilton as the most decorated driver of all time and he's able to mo match him in qualifying again the the races were pretty much on Hamilton's time most of the time but still when Russell was there he was right there with Hamilton a lot of the time in races as well unfortunately he he did have some of those crashes like in uh, uh, Singapore most notably and Canada which were a lot of points lost but again he also had some reliability issues like in Australia, which DNF DNF from the lead must have been very, very bad for his uh, motivation as well. Then uh, Brazil, which wouldn't have been too many points anyway, because, you know, he was like right behind Hamilton and Hamilton finished in PA. But still, it was a. Hamilton had much better reliability over the entire season and. One of those DNFs from Russell were also caused by Hamilton in the Qatar. A lot of points lost from George, and I feel like he had a better season than most Which people think. In DNF in Qatar. Yeah, he did in DNF, but uh, he could have. He probably should have got second. Yeah, he pr probably should have gotten uh, at least a podium. He was very quick. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. That was uh, that was just unfortunate from from Russell's perspective. Again, uh, being that close to Hamilton and beating him in, in his first season in Mercedes, I feel like we should combine these seasons into some kind of a super season, like when we're in raking, rating Russell and Hamilton compared to each other, because I think the, the second part of, of the last season was kind of a start of this trend of Russell being up there with Hamilton, sometimes even being quicker, and in the races, Hamilton still having the edge in, in the race pace, general tire management, uh, just driver IQ in the races. Russell just, I mean, he, he's handled the pressure pretty well, but he's just not on that level just yet to outperform Hamilton over the entire season. Maybe we'll, we'll, I'll get proven wrong next season, but he's almost there. Almost just, he's against such a good teammate that it's really difficult to, to, well, prove just how your, big your talent is. And I don't get why people rank driver, driver like Norris, for example, higher than Russell, when Norris basically had PS3 as a teammate and Russell had Hamilton, which is a completely different league of a driver. Even though I, I think PS3 performed very well, I still think Hamilton, even his, at his age, is still a very, very strong driver. And I think Russell deserves an 8 for me. Interesting. Mm, that's really fair. I 
do agree with like a lot of the stuff you said he was unlucky this season and so on uh, I'm not like I'm arguing with myself like I still think it was a poor season from him don't get me wrong you know he, he was the lowest of what we should expect the top eight to be um and I do think the Mercedes were like quicker and for a lot of this season than Ferrari uh that Aston and like he had he showed a lot of promise he was quicker than Hamilton last year so on and so forth I'm not going to be too harsh I was thinking between five and six I will go for six just because I don't think like it was an awful season he definitely showed a lot of promise in a lot of races um but like even in Singapore like Hamilton was being quicker than him behind uh and stuff like that plays in my mind they've proven they're like quick for different races between the two of them uh mm. so yeah I, I will give him a six I do think it's disappointing but I'm not going to break him too lowly yeah I think Russell he did have a really unlucky season I feel like Hamilton caused him a lot of that bad luck, the stress of being with Hamilton and also Hamilton just turning into him quite a bit. And of course, reliability issues. So I feel like he could have maybe at like the same points as around Norris or yeah. there, but he just didn't have the luck on his side. So even though it wasn't the best from him, I am going to give him a 6.5. That's fair. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, pretty fair. All right. Um, we moving to over to Carlos Sainz, who's obviously one of the three Grand Prix winners this year, and the only non Red Bull winner of the season. I think Singapore was the main highlight of this the season. Yeah. Which obviously was his second victory in uh, in Formula One. And very well managed, very showed very very high driver IQ in there as well. I was pretty impressed with Science this season, but just not as as much as I was impressed with the clerk, for example. I think Science had a very very good season, just still was outperformed by Leclerc by still significant margin. I think if, the, if Ferrari get another twenty twenty. 2022 season where Ferrari can fight the Red Bull for, for wins at the start of the season. I think Leclerc will still be up there higher than Sainz most of the time. Just Sainz, even though he's shown great promise and was very close to Leclerc and out qualifying Leclerc quite a few times as well, just not really on his level just yet. Maybe in the future, we, we don't know. Very impressed with Sainz over the entire season. Just yeah, another eight point five for me because I guess I give them a lot. <laughs> um, he, uh, he basically the same story as Russell for me, except he has a win, so that's going to bump him up to a seven. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a season that I do think is forgettable for him. The fact that he's down here with a race win says a lot. I think. Um, of course, he was quite close to. He could have came fourth, like there was that whole close to fourth. But I do think in some situations he just let off. Particularly, maybe this is a bias towards races that have happened recently. But Abu Dhabi, you know, that was disappointing. Um, and again, he, out of all the fourth place drivers, he's the only one with a win which is a significant margin of points. Uh, so I am going to end up giving him a seven, but I still think he was good. I still think, you yeah, know, the seven's a good, good rating. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Oops. <laughs> 67. <laughs> Six and seven. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Well, for me, I feel like fourth to seventh are all pretty much the same season. Anyone could have gone fourth there. 
anyone could have gone seventh at that point. It is so close. Yeah. I feel like Sainz... I feel like Sainz was the better driver than Leclerc, to me at least. Most people would say otherwise, but I feel like Sainz wasn't as lucky as Leclerc this season. Uh, uh, of course, Ferrari's strategy was just so screwed up. Honestly, like, if the strategy just was just a bit better, they could have beaten Mercedes with some ease. So, I would say I'm giving Sainz an 8.5 for now. Like, he, it's pretty high ranking. Yeah, your highest. I would give Leclerc a high one. Yeah, so far my highest one. Makes sense. He was the only other full race, like race winner, to uh, than the two Red Bulls. Yeah. The CPR stream on the sprint, but mm. I get your point. Yep. Have a good season. Um. Now we get to Lando Norris. Um. This is another situation like with Albon, but on the other hand, we we saw what Norris can do against proven teammates like. Science obviously science performed better, but that was when Norris was still a rookie and then is in second season they were pretty much next to each other. And then Ricardo came in and Norris beat him in the first season and demolished him in the in the, in the another another one. So yeah, Norris is now becoming a very scary driver when he you give him the car, he's basically finishing P two behind Max because Max is just doing first up and things. Finish P two like so many times this season, got a lot of podiums. Unfortunately, not that first winning just yet, but he'll he'll get up there uh, sooner or later. Just eventually, we'll have to wait for it. Yep, I was very impressed with Norris. Very, very good race craft, very good speed. Just those few rare moments of um, just him not being super 100% consistent, like Qatar, for example. I think Norris should have won Qatar if he didn't make that mistake in, in qualifying and didn't get a great drop by like so many positions. I feel I felt like Norris threw some chances this season to be even more impressive. But I'm still gonna give him a nine, same rating as PS3. Just very, very good. I cannot say I was a bad season by any stretch. Mm. Um, oh, uh, I, I think it was a really good season for Norris. I think, again, you've got to take off every race until Austria. But as soon as he came to Austria, like, he felt like the second best driver to me um, in that whole season. I, I would say a lot of second places, a lot of being close to Max as well, which I think was really impressive. Obviously, he's all the way down here, but I don't think that's an indictment. As I say, I think it was mainly just because of how so it was in before Austria, but I think since then he has been the second best driver. I really enjoyed him. He's not going to get a 10 because obviously a 10, but he would have to win a race maybe, maybe Good. win a few races, but I'm still going to give him a nine because obviously he was just superb. Well-deserved nine as well. Yeah. For me, I feel like the first like half of the season is completely out of the question yeah any driver with that car i feel like even for stopping would be struggling to like get even top five with that car so i feel like just after austria is where we counted for him and since then he was the one of the only drivers that was like competing with for stopping he was the only one matching his pace except for like singapore so i feel like he was the second most impressive driver this season even though he came sixth you know, that was just the car in the first few races. So I am going to give him a 9 too. Right, I think that's uh, as long as AJX, AJX's 9 is there, I think that's the highest rating so far. Not bad yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very well deserved season from uh, a rating from Norris first season. Yeah. Now we get the top 5 with starting with Charles. Clerk, which, uh, without a spoiler, I mean, I think he was the second most impressive driver this season. 
I think there were so many instances where his team screwed him up in some form or another. Just trash strategies, trash reliability, and generally the car wasn't very quick in the race pace. And still, Charles is still here, P5 in the driver standings, not that far behind Lewis even. Just I feel like if, if Charles was uh, not as unlucky, like there are so many DNFs, DNS, even in DSQ, uh, from very high positions, just all of points lost, and I feel like he would have finished P2 in the driver standings if not for that bad luck. We just chose the quality of Charles, and I don't think he lost any. I don't think he lost any quality from 2022. I think still the same driver, maybe even more consistent. Just needs to finish off, uh, not to finish off, uh, just erase those few rare moments where he crashes in qualifying, pushing over the limit. And if he manages that, he just probably another first step and maybe up there. So yeah, nine point five for me. I was very impressed for Leclerc. I I don't feel I feel like there's nothing really to say bad about Leclerc's season apart from uh, him crashing on in Miami, which obviously was him fighting for pole position in an inferior car to the Red Bulls. So yeah, I mean it's pretty fair. He's not fighting for a title at that point, so might as well just try. Um, for me, I I I I was actually quite kind of disappointed with him this season. I do agree that his team messed him up, obviously, but I don't think he was that much better than Science, and I really do think he is better than Science in a lot of ways. There was definitely a lot of races where he sort of disappointed me. Um, obviously, all this being said, he's still going to get a good rating, but. Like, I don't, I, I just, Ferrari didn't, like, impress me that much this season. Um, you know, and I feel that's a lot of the midfield. I think the Mercedes is the same, isn't it? And as well as the, uh, in some ways, well, Mercedes and Ferrari, I think, are lucky to be still the top two. Um, because I think Aston Martin and, uh, the Aston Martin and the uh, McLaren, if they were slow at the start of the season or slow in the middle of the season, then they'd be the better two cars. So I will, I'm, I'm only going to give him a seven, the same as his teammate. He just, like, he probably deserves a bit better, but like, he didn't, he didn't uh, impress me that much. Well, yeah, I still respect your opinion, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I respect yours as well. I mean, <laughs> I cannot convince you to change your opinion. It's, yeah. We are doing the average anyway, so... Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. For me, Leclerc, he's obviously an incredible driver. I feel like at his peak, he can compete with Verstappen, like, in, in skill-wise. Yeah. But Leclerc is very inconsistent. Sometimes he's performing really well, sometimes he's not. And that's, like, the one problem I see. He... The difference between him and Verstappen is Verstappen's always at his A game, while Leclerc varies on the day, which is why I think Sainz is the better driver. So I am giving Leclerc 0.5 below him and giving him an 8. Okay. That's honestly surprised that you both gave Leclerc a lower rating than I anticipated, but I mean, it's fair, it's your opinion, so. As we move on, um, Alonso, um, this is going to be a very, very simple one. Came in to Aston Martin, the Aston Martin became a great, great car, got a lot of podiums at the start of the season. Then the Astons kind of dropped out, got to the point where it was the slowest car in Mexico, and then just jumped back in, got a podium in Brazil. We have an amazing drive, especially in racecraft, and just be... Not just B, it was absolute demolish, uh, demolish, uh, demolition, I think that's the word. Just destroyed Stroll in every single way. I think there were like, uh, only like two instances where Stroll was able to beat Alonso, which, which were like Austria and Brazil in qualifying. And again, in the, in the races, where at Stroll's peak, he was still matching or even slower than Alonso. There were like, there were like no instances where Stroll was better in the race than Alonso, so 
yeah, Alonso a very impressive season, but considering just uh, how he performed against Ocon, I mean, he was the better driver, but still Ocon was very close. So I don't feel like Alonso is just... I'll, I'll wait for him to prove, if obviously he has the time to prove he still has it against another teammate. Obviously, uh, Alonso had probably the most teammates out of any, any driver on this, on this grid, but he's now 42 or something like that. Uh, I would love Stroll to get dropped, but obviously that's probably not going to happen unless Stroll wants to drop out himself. Yeah, I was impressed by Alonso, but it's the same situation as Albon or, or the Red Bulls when we get to that, where I... I don't know. I'll definitely give him a rating higher than 8, but I don't know if a, if a 9 is justified when I feel, felt like it was more a stroll being trashed than, rather than Alonso being like better than Max. Okay, I'm gonna go with 9, just because just how consistent he was. Like, very, very, very good at the start of the season. I, even in the end, still was up there when giving the car. So yeah, uh, that's a nine for me. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty fair rating. Uh, I agree. Uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll say exactly, basically, I think him and Norris were the standouts in this like front pack. Uh, I think he did really well at the start of the season, and then his car sort of... <laughs> uh, bless me. Uh, his development sort of went down the drain, so I don't think that's his fault. I think he was, I mean, it's, it's not difficult being against Stroll, but I think he was just superb against him. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I have to agree 9 as well. I think he was about as good as uh, Norris throughout the season. And, you know, if his car was better, he would be probably up, up there with Hamilton or against Perez, but unfortunately it just dropped off so much. I think it's sort of the opposite thing where you, you have to... With him after Canada, you sort of have to ignore the rest of the races because the development went down the drain. But before that, he was just superb. Yeah. As in Martin, they were, like, extremely competitive first half. They were definitely one of the best cars there. And then they just fell off really hard. I feel like Alonso could have been competing for top three if that didn't happen. He was an incredible driver still. He's always been one of the best drivers. Even though at his age, he's still competing for top three. Maybe if he gets a better car, he'll be competing for um, championships again. But for now, it doesn't look like that. So, although, yeah, he was in <laughs> insanely good compared to Stroll, but that is Stroll. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Aston Martin was like, if he had maybe Piastri, they would have both been top five. I'm not sure. But I'm going to give him an 8.5. I think he was about as good as Sainz. So mm, he's going to sit there. All right. Okay, that's a pretty high rating. 8.8. That's the second, second, second highest now. Just mm -hmm. ahead of Hulkenberg. All right. Um, we get to the top three. Which obviously was very, very spread out. I mean, <laughs> got to the Red Bulls a bit later. Hamilton, when it comes to Hamilton's season, very consistent, very quick throughout the season. Beat his teammate pretty much uh, in every single way, apart from qualifying where they were pretty much equal, which I think most Sarah says more about Russell than about Hamilton. I think Hamilton hasn't really dropped off in pace or anything like that. I think Hamilton is still Similar to Alonso, still very, very good at his age. Still one of the best drivers uh, on the grid. And proving that again this season, a lot of podiums, a lot of races were just... It was just up there, like almost every single race. Like, only like towards the end of the season, we saw Hamilton drop off in, in a few races, like Las Vegas or Abu Dhabi. But yeah, Mercedes wasn't as good of a car. Uh, towards the end, uh, after obviously after after USA, uh, US Grand Prix. So yeah, uh, very impressed by Hamilton, but I cannot give him a higher rating than Alonso. Uh, just not just a nine again for me. 
Mm. Um, I so I think Hamilton's the greatest of all time, right? And I think uh, you know should have eight world championships, so on has the most race wins, all this or that. I think it is a lot better than last season, which was to me his probably worst season, um, or up there with one of his worst seasons. But I don't think it's like up up there. I do think he can still do better. Um, maybe I'll be cruel on him. But, you know, he's, he's the greatest of all time. And, you know, to yeah, have another season without a race win uh, to sort of have a few situations. And, like, maybe I'd give him a nine. He was chasing Perez for a long time. Maybe I'd be in cruel, but I, I don't know. I, again, I feel you can see in my ratings I'm just judging the Mercedes and uh, Ferraris maybe a bit differently to the Astons and... and uh, uh, McLaren's, but I, I, I'm going to give him an eight. Just sticking with my rule. All right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do think I've been cruel there. I do think he probably deserves a nine. For me, Hamilton, of course, one of the greatest drivers ever. He was impressive this season. He had a great car. I feel like Alonso's season was better, though. I feel like he had the worst car somehow. He wasn't even that far off of Hamilton, even though his like end of the season was pretty much nothing. I feel like I don't know if I want to give him an eight or an eight point five because um, yeah, I'm gonna give him an eight because I feel like Signs and Alonso did have a better season than Hamilton. Yeah. That, that's that's uh, I think the same for me. Also, it's Lewis Hamilton. Like I expect, I expect tens from him, and like I think almost over half his career has been a ten. So you know when when he's when he's coming third, you know it does drop to an eight. But like again, just super. I think you look at the other people I put on eights. You know, Piastri, Albon. You know, the, the I I think those two are really really good. So. Yeah, it was a good season, but just just missing out on the uh, the big numbers. Yeah, I fell off. Uh, sorry, it's never a shoot. Do you want us to continue onwards to? Uh, uh just just fix it. It's fine. Um. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now you get to the the spicy one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sergio Perez, and <laughs> arguably his worst season in the Formula One. There were mm. countless instances where he was just nowhere, absolutely destroyed by Max in qualifying and just in the races, crashing into the random drivers, just very, very, very bad from Perez. And even though I went with a pretty high rating of 5.5 before, I'm not going him a high rating at that because I don't, I don't know. I when it, when it comes to, for example, Alonso Stroll. Like the the difference between them, obviously, uh, I rate uh, Max above Alonso. And when it comes to like Sergeant Alban, Sergeant was a rookie, and Alban is not proven enough. So those are the ratings that I have to compare to Perez. And Max is as like, as big as as the gap was. You have to think about Max as the quickest or the best driver right now in Formula One. And even being close to Max in some instances, like at the start of the season, he won two races and was pretty much next to Max in the championship. Obviously, then Miami came and Max turned on God mode and then just cruised into 10, 10 wins in a row. That was the time where Perez got into his mind. Basically, his mindset broke and he couldn't, couldn't compete anymore. He was just broken, I think, mentally. They played a lot, of, lot of, a big part in uh, in his drop in performance, but towards the end of the season it was it was a bit better, not quite as good, but he got a couple of podiums and he almost won the Las Vegas Grand Prix if he wasn't useless in the racecraft. So unfortunately, um, for Perez, it's uh, it's it's pretty much a four, or actually a four point five. I'm gonna do the same as Sergeant. I cannot give him anything higher and lower. I don't know. Uh, if I were to go lower, I would have to lower Strolls and Sergeant as well, which I don't want to do anymore. So, 
yeah, 4.5. I feel like you're going to be way lower than that. So <laughs> you can go. Uh, okay, my my point of view on this is it was quite an embarrassing season for Paris. That car was so much quicker than any other car. I think they showed that from day dot. Um, just the way that he just got dismantled at the end, though, or in the midpoint, I know, I know he finishes second overall, but that is thanks to some race wins. And the fact the car is so much quicker, I think it is a really, really disappointing season for Paris. The amount of times he qualified out of the top five, never mind not being top two, because he really should be top two every single race. It was, it was just so disappointing. And just like, he was not a challenge to Max. I mean, we'll get to Max but the fact he got more points than everyone else combined, I'm pretty sure, is no, the stat. I think he got twice, uh, more than twice the points of Perez, but not everyone combined. Okay. Well, also, like, the other statistic I saw was that the gap between Perez and um, the last place was uh, uh, smaller than the gap between Paris and Verstappen. It was just an awful season. And he's going to get a three, but he's lucky. He's lucky to get a three. He's lucky he won at least one or two races. Because um, really, he's getting towards a two or below. Yeah. For me, Paris, that, if this was honestly just embarrassing. Like, that, in, not the entire season, because, like, he still won some races. So. I don't think I'm going to give him lower than a 3 because he beat Verstappen in a few races, which is impressive. So I am going to give him a 4 just because of his race wins. If he didn't win any races, he would be sitting at like a 3 or below. I feel like he had no idea what he was doing. It looked like he was a rookie. He did not deserve that seat in Red Bull. Like any other driver would have performed so much better. So he four is the highest I could give him. Yeah, I performed pretty well. It's just uh, I don't feel like every every other driver would perform well and Perez, better than Perez. I think Perez still would beat a lot of drivers on the grid in the same machine. Just against Max, he's he's looking very very embarrassing, as he said, very rookie like. Just not that capable midfield driver that's getting podiums uh, every few races like we saw in before his Red Bull stint. Just uh, underwhelming, uh, not impressive, just embarrassing in every every shape or form, just very, very bad. Hopefully it, it's going to be a better season next next year, just uh, I'm not really hopeful for that because, I mean, he got it got worse from 2021 to uh, to the season before, I mean, 2022 was, I think it was his best season at Red Bull, and they still got destroyed by Max, and the season was just even worse. So, yeah, I'm not really hopeful for Perez for for next season, but we'll see. Maybe he turns it up for a few first few races and then just cruises in the second place for the rest. I don't know. Ah, well, we'll see. Obviously, we don't know how good the Red Bull will be next season, but I'm I'm afraid it's going to be a very similar story to this one. Well, hopefully not, but yeah, I'm just I'm just afraid of that. I have like no hope for Perez getting second again. Yeah. I feel like uh, if Mercedes like are doing what they say, then I feel like Hamilton and Verstappen will be first, second next season. I don't think they have a chance. I think Hamilton's going to be quicker. I think as long as. The McLarens don't, like, F up their car at the start of the season again. They're going to be up there. I think Ferrari will be a bit quicker. I, I think this was the dominant season for Red Bull. I hope it was the dominant season for Red Bull. And I still expect Verstappen to win next year, but I don't expect Perez. Unless he bucks up his ideas to be second. He's lucky to be second. So lucky. Yeah. He honestly, like, th this... He... he... He didn't deserve second this time at all. The, Hamilton could have easily taken that if he just was like a bit luckier. He, yeah. I feel like Hamilton could have gotten a win here. Uh, it was just a bad season for him. The fact they celebrated him getting second just made me feel a bit sick. Because, mm. like, 
<laughs> he should have gone second so easily. Yeah, it, I mean, next season, hopefully. Paris, he's, I doubt Paris is ever getting top two again. Yeah. I agree with you guys. I'm very, very skeptical about Perez next season. Just although it will all depend on the car, obviously. If if Red Bull build an even more dominant car in this season, we're in kind of a trouble. But yeah, Perez just I think it is this is his last season. Red Bull next season even even could be dropped mid season like we saw with with the Vries or before with Albon or Gasly. Just that can yeah, happen. If if Ricardo or Snowda are performing really well and beating the other uh, by a margin, we could see a mid-season swap because at that point we Even... could see Red Bull being first in constructors by a lot of points as well. Even I could see like a panic by for Norris. Uh... It's going to be crazy like that. I know that sounds crazy, but like... Yeah. Oh, I would hate if Norris went to Red Bull. Me too, I but it just makes sense. Plan, so much. It makes sense. I think he has yeah. a similar drive style to Verstappen. I guess the worry would be maybe he'd challenge Verstappen, but yeah, yeah. Imagine just... a driver outplacing Verstappen in the same car. Yeah, I don't. It, it's, <laughs> it's difficult to believe. But <laughs> I mean... Yeah, how do you imagine something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there's Alex, a driver. You imagine Alex Albon for that half a season. Uh, I mean, that wasn't very like that was more of Max just not being consistent yeah. and he crashing yeah, crashed uh, a lot. But <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, if if Perez was as close to Max as Albon was in the second half of 2019, it would be all right. Just it's not anywhere near that. And yeah, um, yeah, okay. Um, I guess we go to the last one. Obviously, Max Verstappen had one of the best seasons we've seen from a single driver ever. I mean, one like what is 19 or tw of a 22, I think. 19 of a 22 races this yeah, season, one like four sp more sprints. And go let over a thousand laps, like over ten pole positions or something like that. Go up podium pretty much in every single race apart from uh, Singapore. Uh, it's actually holding the two longest win streaks as well. The ten races one, and I think he's on another seven races in a row one that ended in Abu Dhabi. So he technically has the first and the third longest win streaks right now in a single season. Yeah, that car has been incredible, but Max has been even more impressive than his car at that point. Does yeah. destroyed Perez in every every single way. It's just there's a, there was no competition for Max, even if the car wasn't as dominant in a few races. He still got the lead and never looked back and cruised into this win. And yeah, just unbelievable. Even 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 when the car wasn't good. Very good. Like in Singapore, he still finished P5 and was like yeah. almost finished P4. Just yeah. crazy things. Yeah, I think straight up 10 for me. Just It's just impossible to like not give him a 10. Like Everything I've rated everyone else on has been to get up to this point. No one can even match him. Worst season. I mean, it was incredibly predictable at times. <laughs> yeah. But... Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know, I just don't have the words. I don't have the words to like say just how incredible the season he had. It was unmatchable. Um, and yeah, like, damn, damn. Yeah. what the hell? Damn. He will, <laughs> he will. He will probably end up having the sport change because of how quick he is this year. Because how quick he has been for basically. Not even like for the last twenty months, compared to everyone else, he'll probably yeah. end up getting the sports change. So, congrats to Max. Like, I can't not give him a ten. Yeah, I think it was ever since Austria twenty twenty two, Max won basically every season, every 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 race but four, which is like 
20, 28 out of, out of 33 races. Just crazy. I bet he was like second or third for a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, in 2022, he was getting the podiums a lot often as well. In 2021, even as well. Like, ever since 2021 started, he max got like a 70 or 80% of win rate in, sp in the, the span of those three seasons. Yeah. yeah. Okay, for me, for Sapin, I feel like by far the best, like, driver here. Um, he outperformed Perez by so much, and honestly, I'd say this is probably the best season out of any driver ever. But to have a 10, I feel like you have to get every point. So for me, I'm going to give him a 9 plus. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. No, just, no, he, he missed a few points. <laughs> yeah. he, did, he didn't win every single race of the season. What the, what the yeah, trash yeah, driver, 9.7. He lap every race, so he missed point three. But yeah. I feel like no one's ever going to get more than a 9.7 from me. Yeah, I mean, he, he, didn't, he didn't break every single record in Formula 1 history in one season. It's kind of yeah, not a fan. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he misses point three. It's just too much. Yeah, a couple more records next season, and I may get a nine point eight. <laughs> yeah, but he got seventy eight percent of all points possible, right? Something like that. I think so, it was more, but yeah, we don't know. Yeah. It was he basically lost points in only like four or five races. Like basically, won every single race apart from that, like with yeah. fastest lap as well. But there were like few instances where he couldn't get the fastest lap, but that was maybe whenever Max just uh, the Red Bull wasn't confident enough for Max to pull it off. Because, for example, in Belgium, Max went in the pit from the lead like 25 seconds ahead, and they just didn't allow him to to pit for the fastest lap. Mm. Well, uh -huh. his average is 9.9. .9. Yeah, I mean the zero point nine uh, is pretty bad. <laughs> not gonna lie. He he needs yeah. to he needs to get better, honestly. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like that's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, I mean Sarton's kinda kinda close, like he has the f well, he's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> So what is our ranking? What's the order? Yeah, I'm gonna uh, do the ranking. Now he's no, second. I'm gonna go a bit lower yeah, for that. One, so. Um and sort it out. By you guys are way better cheats than I am. Okay, this is the oh, ranking there you go. with the driver standings next to them. So Max first with 9.9, .9, Norris second with 9.0, Alonso third with 8.8. .8. Uh, Hulkenberg is fourth place in Haas with 8.7. <laughs> Can I ask, was Norris the only one we all agreed on? I think uh, so. Yeah, I think so. You're right. Almost for stopping, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. you guys overrated him a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, now we go to Hamilton and eight point three. Uh, so is PS three. I think they got the same. Uh, yeah, the same. Exactly the same number. Uh, Leclerc a bit below with eight point two. Then it's Sainz eight point zero. Lawson seven point eight. Sunoda 7.7, Albon 7.5, Ocon 7.0, then the Russell 6, 6.8, a very, very low rating, uh, considering his uh, driver champion, driver's championship placement, Dennis Gasly 6.7, Bottas 6.2, Ricardo 5.0, Magnussen 4.8, uh, Show 4.5, Dennis Perez, from P2 in the championship to P17 in the driver rankings with <laughs> 3.8. Then it's Sargent, obviously, 3.3. Stroll with 3.0. And actually, it's not P17. Uh, it's P19 because of uh, yeah, 22 yeah. drivers. So you only beat in the Sargent, technically. Oh, uh, Stroll yeah. as well. But okay. And the Breeze with 1.7. That was, I mean, that was expected. So yeah. I think we've been pretty based there. I, I would rate that. Perfectly, I think. Yeah, that's that's what I'd rate everyone yeah. else. Yeah, that's a very interesting ranking. Like some some very unpopular opinions uh, compared to like the rest of the world, because I imagine most 
most rankings have drivers like Hulkenberg, Sunoda, and uh, and even Lawson. They have they have them much much lower. So I've seen a lot of rankings with Hulkenberg like P15 or something like that. I'm I'm like walking. No, I, which, think, I think we've done amazing work. Though. Yeah, I think yeah, I think this is a pretty great list. Yeah. Uh yeah, Max needs to get better obviously next season because I mean yeah. zero point one, not even beating all the records, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of mid. <laughs> all right. Yeah, kind of, kind of average season. All right. Um, yeah. yeah. Any <clears throat> any other rankings ratings you want to point out, like drivers being whatever. Uh, personally, apart from Russell and Ocon being swapped, I honestly that would be that would be my list. Oh, I was pretty uh, much. Hmm. I feel like the only difference I would put is signs over Leclerc, but other than that, it's all perfect for me. I mean, obviously, my list has Leclerc again P two and here P seven. <laughs> I had them both equal. Yeah, I, I, I respect your opinion. I just feel like Leclerc had an underrated season. We just. Which is just proven by your rating, so I'm happy with that. I mean, honestly, I right. very good rating. Very. Actually, I think you're both wrong. I don't think he. <laughs> yeah. I think they're both pretty enough. Yep. <laughs> okay. Both look good enough. All right. I feel like Ferrari well, is on these Ferraris chapters. So. Yeah, yeah. In terms of teams, like I'd probably rate Ferrari quite far down, so maybe they are doing better than I think. Yep. When it comes to like average, I think McLaren has by far the as the average in terms of the rating, uh, driver ratings, and it's probably yeah. Ferrari, yeah. then AlphaTauri, and uh, probably you know, Mercedes. Take out the other two AlphaTauri drivers, so they probably dropped it. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, Alpha. Uh, that's the Mercedes. Then it's probably from Red Bull because Max is such a higher rating that it probably averages out yeah, high, yeah, uh, around the Alpine level. So yeah. Um, okay, I guess we can wrap this up. It was a long recording as well, like almost two hours. So thank you both of you joining me and yeah. joining me on the, all the streams and recordings throughout the season. It's been it's a pleasure. Been a nice journey, and hopefully we can continue this for next season as well. Thank you, mm-hmm. thank you a lot for well <laughs> spending time with me and creating content because I really wanted to do this for a long time and I finally found the courage and found two great friends to do this with so I'm very grateful for that yeah, yeah um, it's been amazing. let's have a better season great. let's have a better season next time <laughs> it's it's been more exciting, yeah. <laughs> okay. get a lot more planes next season okay. oh, I see yeah, <laughs> yeah we haven't discussed the scoring itself with Lebanon obviously um mm. yeah i won the won the scoring with 49 points hj second with 45. Lebanon at 23. pretty close, <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> i mean you can based off the average because it, it's the more representative because you missed the three first three races and still like 2.3 yeah i mean you should give us mm. more of a more of a challenge yeah. Yeah, I need to up and pace yeah. Logan's predictions. <laughs> True. I mean, as long as I don't have Max in P one. <laughs> yeah. Like those, those were my worst predictions. Whenever I didn't have Max in P one, because every time I I put someone else in P one, Max got P one. So that was. Just, uh, yeah. Vegas won it for you. Vegas won it for you. Yeah. Good year. Uh, not as good of a season, but I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Hopefully, you two had as well. So, yeah, oh, yeah, it was great. Yep. Goodbye, twenty twenty three season, and see you next year. Uh, By twenty twenty three. Yeah. Yep. Finally, the season's over. Yep. <laughs> yep. And a big thanks to everyone who's been watching us as well, all the viewers and all the all the people who are watching our streams and and uh, on the recordings. And everything basically, I'm very we are very grateful for that, I believe. Because, yeah, yeah, this is you sat through this entire video, just like comment bread so that we know (laughs) two hour video. Yeah, it's uh, yep, I'm I'm at loss of words, honestly. I feel I feel very, very similar uh, way to what I felt in my goodbye Minecraft video. 
just uh, very emotional. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to close this out. Thanks everyone for watching again, and see you next season. Hopefully we get a better one. See ya. Yeah. Bye. Bye.